Welcome, this is Jeff Bennett at Evergreen Systems. Today we're going to look at how you can perform some of the uh, common configuration adjustments to our Metro style CMS application. We're going to start with installing the app uh, using the settings page to verify the installation and make other uh, adjustments. Uh, we'll also cover the creation of new ticket types that are displayed on the, st the status screen. We'll adjust some of the common properties. We'll also extend the, uh, the search to include other data sources within ServiceNow. Um, also cover creating your own theme, making page changes, as well as altering kind of the navigation tiles on the home page. To get our CMS application into your environment, you'd install it through the application store. And then once it's fully installed, you'll have a new <clears throat> um, CMS portal menu, app application menu on your side where you can adjust your settings, launch the portal, uh, configure some of the adjustments as well. Uh, accompany with the install is a guide that covers kind of the common uh, kind of setup activities you have to do, adjustments to some of the uh, global table access permissions, uh, as well as some of the plugins we recommend activating and so forth. So you can use the settings page here to review which items uh, have, are outstanding that should be adjusted in order for the application to work fully. Uh, and, and some of these are notable. There's an update set to load. There's some pro there's some uh, plugins to activate, as well as some configurations that are suggested in terms of uh, assigning different service categories to your pages. Once everything's installed, it should all be green check marks on your system status and diagnostics section of your page, uh, and you you know can now uh, launch the application and see the portal uh, in all its beauty. So one of the things you might want to do is be able to extend the status screen to include different ticket types. Um, so let's say we want to add a change, for example, into this list. Then what would we do? So we can go to our CMS tickets tables. And in here we have a type field, which is a reference field. So if we click on one of our type fields, we can use that as our uh, basis to create a new type. And I'll use incidents as an example here. So let's change incidents to change. We'll change the label to changes. I'll order it to be kind of after our other uh, other ticket types that are in there. And then the detail macro, this covers whenever we open and expand the, um, <clears throat> the details of a record. It's, this is the information that's going to be displayed to the user. So there's a kind of a default one in here that we can use. So we'll create that. And then the next thing we'll do is create an actual reference to our change table here in this uh, CMS tickets table. We'll set our contact to the requested by. Uh, we'll show the process flow part of it. We'll assign our new changes type to this and we'll save our record. And there's a little UI action, related link action here for generate field list. And what this is going to do is provide a set of standard labels for the, for the record of the table. And this provides some abstraction in that we have the same kind of attributes or labels that we can share across multiple different record types, which enable us to have a consolidated um, uh, page of different records displayed. So I'll go through and assign these to different fields and now when we go to refresh our status page we should have a new ticket type in our list and we do we have a changes if I click on that we'll see that I have one change in my list that's based off of me being the requested by and my my default macro is what's being used to show these details displayed here uh, on the change record. Another thing you might want to do is change the sources or add to the sources on the search screen. To do that, you can go to the CMS search sources table. And we can define a new table here to be searched on our search screen. So I'm going to add users to the list here. We'll just go in to show active users. We'll assign it a font awesome icon. Again, we'll order this so where it shows up in the list. And we'll uh, kind of have the title at the top be the name. The, the category field is important in that it's used to also allow a filter or a narrow results element to those to those records that are displayed in the search results. So we'll save that. <clears throat> we go back to our search screen. If I refresh this, you'll now see users in my list. That's when a search that finds some matches on user. So now you see my name in my list of users. Let's just hide some of the results. So you can see here that we've actually searched for the user table and um, can also use that category or the location field to uh, to filter our records further. Another thing you might want to do in setting this up is change the tiles that are displayed on your home page. So to do that, these are again these are stored in a table of navigation tiles. So let's go create a new new record out here. I'll just call this example. In our type, we have three different types: uh, basic, hover, flip. And these 
kind of handle its behavior and what displays whenever I hover over those the, those tiles. Give it a, a short description here. We'll just call this health portal. Uh, font awesome icon to give it uh, an icon to display. And then when we hover over it, we'll have some additional information to display in terms of clicking this. So we'll have a click here for to access the portal. And then we'll give it a URL to connect to. And these can be a URL that would be external to ServiceNow, or it could be reference to a, a content page inside of ServiceNow. You can also set the, uh, the targets. So in this case, I want this to open up in a separate window. And then the CSS class and the CSS hover class are different uh, style sheet classes to apply whenever I hover over this. So let's save this. And then the next thing we need to do is actually apply this to the, uh, the UI macro of the home page. So our default uh, uh, Metro style theme uh, home page macro is called EVG CMS home default. So I'm going to go in here and what I'm going to do is just replace uh, the navigation tile. So these are UI macros that call a, uh, a navigation tile UI macro. I'm just going to change this instead of being service catalog, we'll change this to example, which is the name of that tile we just created. And now when we come back and we refresh our page, you'll see now we have a new tile on here that's replaced our service portfolio or service catalog tile. And when I click on it, it launches out the, the browser window that we had. On our settings page, there are a number of properties that control items such as the items displayed or the age of items to, to query. I'm going to highlight a couple here that control the, the, the news carousel on the home page. Uh, so the first one here is which topic or knowledge topic to query for records. The other one is the time uh, to transition between slides and these are in milliseconds. So I'm going to set this to general and to two seconds. So we'll save this. Our properties are updated. <clears throat> And so now when we go to the home page and I refresh, you'll see now we're pulling records from uh, the knowledge base that are the uh, topic equal to general. The other thing you'll notice is a background image on those um, knowledge articles. And so you can actually edit what image displays on these different articles. And this can be a different image for, for, every, for each individual articles. So let me go to one of this ones related to spyware and viruses. And I'll show you, we'll, we'll add a background image to this one. And we'll choose our image from our little library here. And now we'll save that record. And when we go back to portal refresh, you'll see now we have a different image specific for that particular uh, topic or article. The, this application has been set up to be personalized um, and it's all driven by these themes. Uh, so you'll see there's two package themes that we have included with this application. One is our Metro style theme and one's an alternative Bronco or orange theme. Um, so when you want to kind of create your own personalization, apply your own styles, you want to do a copy theme, which is going to uh, kind of take whichever one you want to start with as your template and, and copy that to your own specific theme where you can then apply your own styles to it. And what happens when it copies, it's going to kind of include the, some of the same standard stuff, but it's also going to include a specific style sheet just for your theme. And this allows us to override uh, the styles uh, the over, override the styles to have a specific look and feel for this particular theme. The other element of these um, theme records, go back to the theme here real quick, is under the theme contents. And what this is, is this allows you to apply a different UI macro to the header, the footer, or the, or the home page of the particular theme that's selected. So this allows us to have a very different looking header, footer, as well as home page uh, content based off the theme that's selected. So I go out and create new UI macros and I can attach those to here and I've just created some for my company. I'm going to link my new UI macros to the header, footer, and body. I've also gone and applied my own <clears throat> uh, kind of style, pasted my own styles into this style sheet so I can put out a different look and feel. And then the end result is, um, well, notice my end result is no different on my home page, but I have to actually go and assign my new theme to the site. So I can go to settings, and you'll see here in my settings it lists, here is the current site selected theme. When I click on that, it'll take me to the theme admin page. This allows me to set the site theme or preview my theme on a couple pages. And so once I do that, now when I refresh, you'll see a very different look and feel. I've applied a new header, a new body, a new footer to my site, um, as well as a whole different style sheet to uh, kind of override the look and feel, but I'm still using the same components. Last thing I want to cover here is kind of creating your own new page content. Um, so I'm going to create a new dynamic content block to start off with. 
and uh, and then I'll paste this into a Pacific page. So this dynamic content block is basically just going to simply show some history information for the logged on user. So it's got uh, it's pulling in our UI macro for breadcrumbs. It's got a title. It's pulling in. Um, uh, our recent searches we performed, recent knowledge articles we viewed, as well as any new recent uh, service items that we viewed, and just kind of showing those as a list of, of history. So we'll save our dynamic content block, and we go to pages. There's a page that was added out here specifically for this purpose of template that we can copy. So I can copy this template page, I'll call it history, give it the same history U, uh, URL, set the history for title and we'll just set the description to the same thing here too. Now the templates already come packaged with the list or the content for the header, the footer, as well as some uh, dynamic content blocks that handle some of the uh, the code around the, around the site. So now let's go add our content block to this particular site or this particular page. We'll add that to our body section. And then when we go to our portal, we can go to history.do and we will see our new page. And so we're seeing here recent searches, a page title, as well as in recently viewed knowledge articles. Um, so that kind of shows you how you can create new content. So that covers what I'd hoped to cover today. Um, I hope this uh, was helpful for you and I, uh, I look forward to more and more uh, additions to the portal all in all. And thank you very much.